217 perfectly woven pounds, engineered by God. This guy's cool product, man. He's like Jerry Curls and, and, and Pepsi Clear. I may look nice, but it's just a disguise. I am candy coated poison, my friend. Trust me. Let me calm down. I don't want to give you nightmares tonight. Because sooner or later, they all come to the champ and they all kiss the ring. And that is why we love that guy, Chael P. Sonnen. What ring would that be that people are kissing? That would be whatever ring I'm wearing that day. That would be the ring of my choice. They don't need to worry about it. They just need to get down on their knee before me. People say that you've never owned a UFC belt, but I say let's change that right now and say you are the undisputed, unquestioned, never to be questioned champion of the mouth in UFC. We're giving you that belt right now. To, to, to question my superiority would simply be simple, would, would simply be ridiculous. So let's Don't go, interrupt me. Let's go at it hard right away. Agree or disagree? From what you have done in the octagon, not talking, not promotion, but in the octagon, you don't deserve the light heavyweight title shot against John Jones. Agree or disagree? <laughs> but here I am, Landsberg. See, that's the beauty of the whole thing. These guys can cry me a river, but at the end of the day, I didn't wait, I take. I wanted it and I took it and here we are and they can deal with it. And the more they cry and complain, the happier it makes me feel. It genuinely warms my heart to see them ooze with envy. So when Dan Henderson says makes the sport lose a little bit of integrity, you don't necessarily disagree with that because it's not your business whether or not the sport loses integrity. Well, Lansbury, look, normally I would try to work the media, but I know you're, you're a smart mark, okay? Henderson and I are obviously up to something. We're in cahoots. Henderson will be one of the coaches on this show with me, and he will be cornering me on April 27th when I take what is rightfully mine, which is the light heavyweight championship. So Dan and I are obviously up to something. The question is what? And, and when you say it's rightfully yours, could you possibly explain to anyone why the light heavyweight title of the UFC is rightfully yours? Because I say so. Oh. The, same reason, the same reason I got to this spot, Landsberg, the number one contender and the one they're all going to re remember because I said so. Okay, so listen to this clip. This was you on ESPN on August the 11th. We'll roll the clip in the last of your comment. Here it is. Sure, I could go up to 205 and I could take John Jones's belt away the same as I could take his candy on Halloween. Right, you little punk kid. I <laughs> snatch it away all I want. But there's something to be said uh, in sportsmanship for earning uh, your shot. And on the 29th of December, I'm going to go through force to do it. Yeah, that sounded to me like a guy who was saying, hey, you, you know, I'm not ready for this fight with John Jones. I've got other things that I should do first. Why did you change? That sounded to me like a guy that was a one step ahead of everybody else. That sounded to me like a guy that not one other time ever spoke the name or spoke the word December 29th. That sounded to me like a guy that knew exactly what was going to happen and was pulling the strings from behind the scenes. So are, are you willing to admit, because I, I'm not sure how much of this is what you really believe or how much of you, this is you dodging the ultimate question, which is, which is not, will you make money for the UFC? This is not, are you the best talker in the UFC? Do you know how to create a great matchup? This is, in terms of the credibility of the light heavyweight division, the question, are you owed this chance, or should it have gone to someone else forgetting about popularity? What I, what I love about this, Landsberg, is look, here's what you got to understand. If you want to walk around and call yourself the champion, then you got to fight everybody. Okay? That's where I come into this picture. The light heavyweight division and the middleweight division aren't even comparable. As a matter of fact, we had our champion, a guy named Anderson Silva, went up to their division and took on their former champion, a guy named Forrest Griffin. That fight lasted for 93 seconds. To compare the middleweight division where I was king for five years to the light heavyweight division where John is the reigning king isn't even close. This is apples to oranges. When Randy Couture left that division, so did the toughness and the integrity that was with it. So I am coming from a much tougher weight class, and granted, I was a silver medalist, but I'm moving into a lot easier spot. Those are the facts. And if you don't like it, I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. Nor should it bother you at all because, I mean, this would be a great payday for you, right? Look, I'm already rich. I don't, I, I don't care about the money, and I don't care about the fame. I do care about kicking people's ass. 
and on the 27th of April, I will take care of business. And I don't offer any apology for it, and that's it. Yeah, the arena sold out, and yeah, it'll be the biggest fight in, in UFC history. You know, good for it. But I'm not a promoter. I don't have a promoter's license, and I don't like it when, you know, e even when you, who is my friend, comes out and says, I, you know, that I, I can talk and I got a mouth. Listen, if you want to talk to me, don't put the earphone in, in my. I didn't ask for this interview. You asked for it. Well, what is it that you don't the, like? Whoa, I mean, the truth is, the truth is. Landsberg, Landsberg. I I'm said, not I said Landsberg, that you Landsberg, can talk. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm not done. The point that I'm getting at is this. I am the number one contender. I am the one they will remember. I have the mandate of the masses. I have the mandate of the guys on the second floor at the Zufa offices. I even have John Jones saying, that's the one guy I don't want to fight. That's why I'm here. I don't need to read my resume. I got two national championships on my wall that says I can take this guy down and beat him up. Are you finished now? I am. Okay. The floor is yours. So you're talking about second floor at Zufa. The, the point is that Zufa is no different than World Wrestling Entertainment, that they are all about creating great matchups. And the John Jones, uh, Chael Sonnen matchup is amazing. I'm just saying that within the sport, the hardcore sport, it lacks some credibility as being the match that really should be taking place. We've got to go to break, but we'll uh, give you a chance to interrupt me before I interrupt you, and we'll do that when we return. I called that number, Jail Sutton, and, and you didn't answer. Did you really call it? I actually did call it, and a woman's voice answered, and I, I, I don't think she knew at all what I was talking about. I, I was looking to put a house up for listing in Portland, Oregon. I heard that you were the guy. You were the hottest agent, but you weren't there for me, man. Well, God bless her. I, I hope she put a deal together for you. So let me read you some quotes about you from other people, and you just give me a one-line quick comment. From Rampage Jackson, his mouth gets his ass in trouble. That's amazing that you could hear Rampage all the way from the bowels of obscurity. Good for him. John Jones. Let, let, let me guess, that text message was greatly misspelled and you had to have it deciphered. So we'll assume that that's what Rampage meant. John Jones, I have no respect for Chael because of how he talked about the Brazilian people. Deal with it. Uh, now, John, this is even worse. John Jones, recently, he's actually a pretty decent and pretty classy guy. I actually don't hate Chael anymore. I mean, that, that's terrible. That's a, that's a little bit upsetting to me. You know, I, I hate when people try to bring class into a cage fight on Saturday night. I, I just don't get it, you know, but. Fine. Who said this? Sometimes I call him Chelsea. I'm going to guess that was my mother. Who said this? He was rude and mean to you, Michael. I don't like him at all. Yeah, well, you know what? So some guys walk around with their little yellow bracelets, you know, what would Jesus do? I follow a different rule, Landsberg. What would Stone Cold Steve Austin do? That was my mom who said that, by the way. He was mean to you, Michael, but she likes you now. Oh, well, and, okay, now you throw me a curveball. Hello, Mrs. Landsberg. I apologize. Steven Seagal said, that kind of behavior is an embarrassment to the human race. It's an embarrassment to the martial arts. Well, I don't know anything about martial arts, but Steven Seagal would know a damn lot about behavior that's embarrassing to the human race. Before we go, I want to ask you a political question. Uh, Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, has been very complimentary to Barack Obama. Uh, they obviously are in different parties. You've been involved in politics. Do you think that's showing class on his part because there's no trash talking right now? Well, I mean, it's showing politics on his part. Right, right now, what he's looking for is federal aid, uh, uh, Governor Christie. And, and what President Obama's doing is he's stepping up and he's helping people that are hurting right now. So, you know, I, I don't want to insert any gamesmanship there either. But, you know, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing two gentlemen that are coming together. Uh, one's overlooking his state, one's overlooking his country, and they're both doing the right thing, uh, which is taking care of people who, who are in trouble. So finish this statement uh, in two lines. On April the 27th, I, Chael, Peace, Son, and Will... I will walk in there and take care of business. I will walk in there and do what nobody else in the UFC has the courage to attempt to do. And I will become the world champion. Thanks, dude.